I'm going to do an exercise for American Mahjong using the National Mahjong League card. I call this exercise Charleston modeling because we're going to set up mock Charlestons and practice decision making. The Charleston is half the game. If you can master the Charleston, you could master the game. If you're new to Mahjong, or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. We're going to do three random pulls. We'll start as the dealer, and then we'll alternate non-dealer back to dealer. 14, 13, 14. Oh, and then I'll create a mock Charleston with no jokers. We have a pair of V's, green dragon, red dragon, one, two, three, pair of twos and dots, five, six, seven, nine in cracks with a pair of sixes and another six in bams. If these were your tiles, what would you focus on and what would be your first pass? If these were my tiles, I would focus on the multiples, two, six. We have no fours or eights, so I wouldn't focus on evens. I would focus on either consecutive run or like numbers with sixes and dragons. I think I would break up the east. We wouldn't be able to use the east, the two, and the six. So I think we might be able to even do something consecutive up to six, starting with two. So I would break these up, keep the six, one, two, three, keep the six, like numbers with sixes or two through six in mixed suits. If we get a four dot five bam, for example, we might be able to play the fifth consecutive run hand, for example, or like numbers with sixes and break that up or one, two, three with dragons concealed. So let's pass these three. We've got Wests. Wow. Oh, and look, we picked up a six. Like numbers. East and West with sixes. Maybe we can get the East back. It's good to try to remember what you've passed. You might get it back. Let's focus on sixes since we have no gaps for east and west with sixes. Or we could maybe play like numbers. So let's pass these. Now this is a little risky, passing a one, two and one suit. So we've got fours, two, three, four dragon. There was potential for two, three, four dragon, but we have multiples here. We broke up the two. Let's pass these. Flower and a six. I think like numbers with sixes looks pretty good. White dragon is what we would need for the dragon hand since our pairs with the six dot. I think we could probably keep the dragon and pass these three. No keepers. That's a bit risky, three, four, and one suit. Let's let the green dragon go. We got a six. I would focus on like numbers with sixes here. We can pass these three. Six, flower. This is one reason why you don't want to pass flowers. I think at this point I would focus on those sixes. Keep that red. There's a hand there that we could use and I would let these go. This is a little bit risky, passing two wins with news on the card, 
but we have no gaps. I don't remember any other sixes in here, so it might have been better to pass one. No keepers. So we have options with the dragon and four discards. I probably would play the like number hand with Kongs of sixes. Or if we get the white dragon, the one with dragons. We have a joker, green and red dragon, three, four, bam, four, five, nine in cracks, pung a twos in dots, and a three, six. If these were your tiles, what would you focus on, and what would be your first pass? I would focus on these twos. Maybe two, three dragon. We need a one or a four. We could maybe do something consecutive in mixed suits. Wrong tile. Two, three, four. We need flowers. Two, three, four, five. Consecutive run. We have to pass though. I think I would do one of each suit. Focus here. You don't want to spread yourself out too thin. Three, we'll keep it. Two, three. Here's a five. Oh, look. Two, three, four, five. Consecutive run. Two, three, four, five. No gaps. I think I would go with no gaps. Two, three, four, five. No gaps. We do have two, three opposite dragons. Let's stick with it for a few more passes. There is a dragon and a flower, a flower. So we have to make a choice now, two, three, four, five, or two, three dragons. We could use this maybe for the four or the one. Let's pass these three. We've got a red dragon. Now, two, three, four, or one, two, three, dragon. Now this hand, second from the bottom, it needs a pair in the middle. So I would dedicate that to the four. That's a gap hand. We have a gap, no four, but we can use that joker. We did right across left. We have three tiles, including a flower. So we can stop the Charleston here or we can risk it and keep going. Oh, I usually don't pass flowers. One thing I was thinking is we could maybe switch to the year hand with dragons and give these up, or maybe even play a quint and use one for joker bait and let a three go and keep going with the Charleston. So two, three, four, dragon concealed, stop the Charleston and pass two, because I don't like to pass flowers, or risk passing a flower and push for the concealed hand, or play a quint and break up the pair. We don't have near enough flowers for the dragon hand. We need five. I don't think I would do that. Really, we're down to either two, three dragon concealed, stop the Charleston and pass two, or risk it and pass them all.
we have a gap. It's a concealed hand, 30 point hand. That's not a really high point hand. Oh, six one half dozen the other. What would you do? Would you pass a flower here? We have nine more tiles that can help fill that gap. Let's pass and see what happens. It's a risk. No keepers. No keepers. We got a flower. Four, nine. No four dots came around in the Charleston. But we're back to a potential quint or maybe the year hand with dragons. Let's pass two for optional cross. No keepers. I would keep that flower and just wait and see what happens. Discard those. Passing flowers is very situational. Count the cost, make a decision, accept the consequences. Pair of flowers, green and white dragon, four, six in bams with a pair of sixes, one, four, five, six, nine in dots, all singles, three, four in cracks. If these were your tiles, what would you focus on and what would be your first pass? I would build around the flowers and the sixes. We might be able to do like numbers with sixes and dragons, so I would keep that six. We might be able to do mixed suit. Let's see, second, second hand down in mixed suits, four, five, four, five, six. So we need to pass. one of each suit. Flower, four, five, four, five. Ooh, four, five. Okay, four, four, five, four, five, six, nine. Now we have three flowers here. I would go with something that uses lots of flowers, like numbers with sixes, consecutive run in mixed suits. Here's a one suit, one suit potential. I would let these go, build around these flowers and the sixes. Okay, three, four, five, six. Single pair Pung Kong, four flowers. Six hand down. It's a very popular hand, very flexible. I don't like to pass white dragons. Let's see. No matter how we slice this, it's going to be risky. We can still maybe do like numbers with flowers. Seven, single pair Pung Kong discards. Ooh, 
two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. If we can get that green dragon back, we might be able to play a pair hand. We've got lots of options though. One, two, three, three, four, five. We really don't need. Let's keep the seven and give up the two because we can do single pair Pung Kong or single pair Pung Kong depending on which comes in or we can go back to like numbers with sixes. Six. We can still do single pair Pung Kong, single pair Pung Kong. We could maybe pass that. I really don't like passing like numbers or white dragons. Let's pass one blind. No keepers. We could do like numbers with sixes or the single pair pung. I think to get a full pass, I would focus on consecutive run. Pass these. We got a dragon back. Maybe we could play that pair hand. I think I would keep the six. Even though we gave one up, I think a six crack. It's nice to have options. But there's a potential pair hand or Sixth hand down under consecutive run. Since the Charleston is half the game, you can set yourself up for success by making the right decisions during the Charleston. Build around multiples or the predominant pattern in your hand. Keep tiles that support the strength of the hand. Watch the tiles that go around because you might be able to switch your hand and end up in a completely different place than you planned. Master the Charleston, you could master the game. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do, that way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.